Two years ago, I made a video called How to Pitch Warner Brothers Animation. Well, so much has changed since that video, I thought it might be a good time to update the information and talk about the evolution of Warner Media. This video is going to have a lot of detail, a lot of specifics, but if you want the executive summary, here it is. The sibling rivalry is probably over. Cartoon Network is going into new audiences. HBO Max is the place to be. And if you're interested in anime and Warner Brothers, it might be too late because I think they just cashed out. Hey there, welcome back to Surviving Animation, your guide to make it in the business of cartoons. My name is Eric Calderon. I actually can't believe that it was two years ago this month that I made the video about how to pitch Warner Brothers animation. And actually it's been three years since I made the very first video of the channel, which um, I'm actually quite embarrassed to go and look at because not only was I wearing like a ton of makeup and I was just really kind of a mess sitting at the corner of my desk, I actually um, shot it with an iPhone uh, with the selfie camera and I somehow, I don't know what I did, but the video was flipped. So one of my favorite t-shirts of all time, my Lego t-shirt, was actually backwards. So uh, I just never changed it. It's still up there if you want to go way back to that first video. But anyway, the channel is now three years old. So I just want to thank everyone who has stayed with me, who's watched these episodes, and who uh, kept the comments section really lively. I mean, I really like digging in there every day and seeing people's comments and answering the best I can. So if you're new here, thanks for coming, and I hope you like and subscribe to this channel. I talk about the business of cartoons. I'll keep talking about it. And uh, well, here we go, the start of year three. All right, let's get right into the evolution of Warner Media. Probably the biggest internal change at Warner Media since the making of my last video is that there's a new guy in charge, and his name is Tom Asher. Hailing from Nickelodeon and formerly the president of Freeform, a multinational basic cable channel owned by ABC Family Worldwide and a subsidiary of Disney, Ashheim's hiring meant a big overhaul and reorganization of the many disparate units within the mega corporation. As the president of Global Kids, Young Adults, and Classics, Tom reorganized everyone and everything into the many changes that I'll discuss throughout this video. But for the first time, a single person is actually in charge of everything from the preschool shows straight up to Adult Swim. That's the widest range I've ever known for a single executive within a massive vertical like Warner Media. Recently in an interview with Kid Screen, Tom said the goal for the next five years is simple, world domination. As many of you already know, HBO Max is one of the hot new streamers on the block since May of 2020. In aggregate, HBO Max has about 37.7 million subscribers, but that number is also a little complicated. TechCrunch reported back in October of 2020 that 80% of subscribers were actually part of wholesale agreements. In other words, it's not like 37.7 million people signed up for HBO Max on their own. Rather, 80% of them got it through a bundle like those provided by Comcast, Charter, Verizon, AT&T, or DirecTV. And of those bundled viewers, it's still a little bit murky about how many of them actually know about or have browsed through HBO Max. But regardless, AT&T, which is Warner Media's parent company, has still dumped about $2 billion into HBO Max content, which is just insane. In terms of animation on HBO Max, the library is vast. There are adult primetime hits, classic and kids cartoons, anime licenses, DC superhero shows, and some Hanna-Barbera retro programs as well. Inclusive to the HBO brand, HBO Max also seamlessly integrates the voices of Warner Brothers Animation and the DC Comics Animated Library, Cartoon Network and their shows, big Fox primetime licenses like South Park and Family Guy, and Adult Swim and all of its late night weirdness. What's amazing is that they also have a full Studio Ghibli library which for me is a delight because it's my first time being able to watch some of these films in glorious HD at home. As for originals, the first shows have started to trickle out like the new Looney Tunes cartoons, Adventure Time Distant Lands, Close Enough from J.G. Quintal, the regular show creator, and Dig and Seek. And some of the shows previously on Cartoon Network are going straight to streaming, shows like Summer Camp Island and Infinity Train. For a while, it seemed the animation efforts were led by two executives, Billy Wee and Aaron Davidson, but recently Amy Friedman has joined to head kids and family for Warner Media and is flanked by Kimberly Howitt. But it's not yet known how these four executives will exactly relate to each other in terms of development for the platform, but it's worth noting that Amy was previously announced as being named a senior advisor to assuming programming responsibilities for Cartoon Network and offer a strategic, creative, and inclusive programming guidance for the Cartoon Network brand. 
Hey, this is just a little insert because after I was done editing this video, I realized that Amy Friedman has actually recently been named the head of kids and family uh, programming at Warner Brothers on a full-time basis. So this came three months after she was brought on as a senior advisor. So in her new role as head of kids and family, uh, she will oversee the creative and strategic direction of kids and family programming for Cartoon Network and Boomerang, as well as develop and produce kids and family content for HBO Max. Within the industry, Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Network have always been known to be rival siblings. But in August of 2020, both operations are now under the single leadership of Warner Media longtime senior executive, Sam Register. He's now the president of Warner Brothers Animation and Cartoon Network Studios. They'll still function as separate entities, but will be united by a commitment to creative excellence, new voices, and a culture of inclusion and collaboration. From the Warner Brothers side, which mostly but not entirely does the adaptation of DC properties, there will still be the steady flow of the 9 to 14 and 14 plus targeted superhero shows. Some recent outings include Justice Society World War II, Batman Soul of the Dragon, the Batman Death in the Family interactive film, Superman Men of Tomorrow, and Young Justice Season 4. But as I'll soon discuss, some of the DC library will soon have newer adaptations aimed at preschool audiences as well. Now in terms of Cartoon Network, they've just announced a big shift. Traditionally, Cartoon Network has done very well with boys 6 to 11 comedies and slapstick style cartoons. But just a week ago, they announced a major directional change under the headline of Redraw Your World. This pivot means that they want to empower kids to feel comfortable with who they are, embrace their uniqueness, and believe in their own ability to impact change. Largely inspired by Steven Universe, this means that the brand itself is evolving from pure entertainment to more of a mission-driven platform. Also announced is the widening of their target demographic, their launching of their first original preschool block, Cartoonitu, which uh, will also have a presence on HBO Max, includes shows like Bugs Bunny Builders, Mush Mush and the Mushables, Thomas and Friends, and my favorite idea of all, Bat Wheels, a show featuring an anthropomorphic bat meal in the vein of cars. Crunchyroll is the biggest single focus streamer of anime in the US. Its subscriber base is 80 million registered and 3 million paid. It's widely available on a variety of platforms, and from 2017 to 2019, things got pretty exciting with the launch of Crunchyroll Originals and the creation of Crunchyroll Studio, whose intention was to create original anime-inspired works but with new and diverse non-Japanese creators. Unfortunately, they had an early gaffe with the promotional video launched just before their series High Guardian Spice was going to premiere. Fans felt like it wasn't something they even asked for or wanted, and they were quick to point out the tropes the series copied from other beloved anime. And finally, there was a sense that Crunchyroll was boasting too hard on the all-female diverse staff making the show before the series actually proved itself to be good. But Crunchyroll continued on, and since then has released Onyx Equinox, and also invested heavily in the anime productions already happening in Japan, with enough of a percentage to earn the title Crunchyroll Original. And then, the original studio completely closed operations. Now all of this is important history, but it's not the biggest news, because on December 9th of 2020, AT&T sold the entire operation of Crunchyroll to Sony for $1.175 billion. Okay, now that you're up to speed with everything that's happening at Warner Media, how do you talk to them? How do you engage with them? What kind of business is appropriate right now for animation and for dealing with that big mega corporation? So my first bit of advice is try to work there. I mean, actually, it is a massive company. There's a lot of growth. There's a lot of divisions. And there's a lot of shows being made for all different types of audiences. So if you're a maker of animation or you work in the animation industry in any way, Warner Brothers is probably just a really great place to work with a lot of stability and a lot of you know lateral movement. So you could be working for a couple of years on a comedy show. You could be working on an action show. There's just a lot of possibilities, and they're always hiring for, for good talent. So the second thing is they are technically open for business. So I think publicly, you know, Tom Ashheim actually did an interview with Kids Screen Magazine. He said that he's tasking his team to find a new project, work with new IP, um, and try to bring in new pitches. But at the same time, I can tell you firsthand that I met with an executive just weeks ago, and that executive told me, they are completely folded up. They're completely overwhelmed. There's just hundreds and hundreds of hours of stuff they have to work on. And they're kind of closed for everything except for the most extreme situations or the most specific opportunities. So luckily, my meeting happened because I was one of those opportunities. I was working with a, a pretty large intellectual property. So yes, they're open for business, but they're probably open for stuff like big IP opportunities, 
big, massive talent and stuff that, you know, you just couldn't say no to because they're so big in the marketplace already, either as a talented name or as a talented property. So open for business, closed for business, a little ambiguous, but just be aware that that's probably what they're looking for at this moment. I think personally, if you're going to go there with something that might be a newer IP or a smaller intellectual property, you might want to actually wait till close to the end of the summer of 2021 before they're really open for business to actually look at uh, brand new opportunities. So um, two more points or three more points that, that, you know, I want to say that if you are going to do something that is anime or anime influence, like I mentioned before, I think they've totally cashed out on that. I feel like they're going to lean into their legacy of Warner Brothers Animation as a real American-centric company. So it just might not be the right time for an anime or anime influenced idea. I know it's trendy. A lot of people want to do it. Um, Warner Brothers just might not be the place. Now, in addition to that, uh, superhero stuff, always fun, always cool. I love superhero stuff, obviously. But remember, if you're going to go in with a superhero concept, you have to be better than them doing something with Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, etc. So it's going to be a pretty high bar, uh, almost, I would say, inachievable bar to try to bring in a superhero concept that they think is going to be better than their existing library of 80, 90 years old worth of comic material. Um, okay, last thing I'll say before I go is that if you are truly talent, so that if you really do have a talent that is unimitable, which is incredible, which is... Um, you know, market proved with short films or with uh, amazing portfolios, or if you're a production company who just has a great look and a great style, um, or can actually just make a good show at an affordable budget, or you maybe have a new tax subsidy with the country that you live in, Warner Brothers Animation and Warner Media is a great place to go, but it just might not be the place for a pitch. It might be a place where you just want to show yourself and they might have an opportunity that is looking for a studio or a talent uh, to fill something that they want to do with one of their existing properties inside the company already. Okay, so that is it. I know that was a big long one. I hope that you got a lot out of that. Um, as we all discover, the marketplace does change every couple of years. So, uh, you know, the video that I made in 2018 still is kind of relevant in understanding the basic corporate structure, but today's video really updates with what is happening in 2021. Okay, that is it. Again, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.